Hello chess friends and welcome to Yozalov's chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we follow opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. Today we'll talk about some middle games again, although the thing that I wanted to show you today can happen to you in an early stage of the game, so it can happen to you in an opening and it can also happen to you in a later stage of the game, so it means in the end game stage. So today I wanted to talk about this so-called holes in front of your opponent's king. So when that happens, you should apply one of the most important principles about these holes in the position. So first of all, when you see that your opponent has maybe two advanced pawns, when he has maybe dark square problems, light square problems in front of the, his king, you should really occupy this weaknesses. You should attack the light squares, you should attack the dark squares, and you should also attack these weak pawns in front of your opponent's king. So it's logical, it's not a problem to memorize that, but there could be a problem if your opponent has uh, good defensive pieces like the knight, like the bishop, I don't know, maybe he has the queen in front of the king. So you should then remove the key defender, which is uh, most often the knight, and then uh, really try to again attack the weak attack the weak squares or the weak pawns. Uh, one of the most important thing is to be to have this uh, tactical awareness. Uh, I have created the series uh, how to spot chess tactics. It, mm, I will send you the link of this uh, series at the end of this video. So this video meets with uh, with this uh, particular uh, playlist, but it's a little bit different. In uh, this um, in this video, I'm going to show you the strategy how to attack these weak holes. And as I said, uh, you can watch this how to spot chess tactic videos. Uh, also, they are really really important because you improve I think your tactical awareness in the series so uh, let's see now a couple of examples uh, here we have the position you see we have these holes or the weak squares in front of your opponent's king and uh, but the problem is we have the key defender the knight on f6 around the black's king because we would love to play something like queen on h5 and this is now a simple example of course in the next move the best move is uh, to take simply the pawn on h7 there are now several options if you take with the rook here rook takes on h7 then uh, we can take or we can play something like first bishop on g6 is even much more powerful after king on uh, king on d7 we can simply take the rook knight takes uh, queen takes on d5 the king has to retreat again on um, on e8 and now in the next move we can try queen on h5 and take the knight and this would be of course a completely winning end game here for 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 white so in the continuation black, black can try also to take with the knight but it's even worse we have first bishop on g6 uh, king on d7 and now queen on d5 again a checkmate so this is now a simple example let's see, see now a more uh, complicated uh, complicated position here uh, here is the position white has the advantage of the bishop pair uh, the king uh, is a little bit in danger the black king here on h8 and again we have like square problems as i said we have now the holes in your opponent's position these are of course this light squares but the problem is uh, black has a good defender uh, the knight on c5 we would love to play something like bishop on e6 attacking the rook so we would love to get use of this light school problems that black has in the continuation and as i said when that happens you should all, uh, simply remove the key defender and it's of course this knight on c5 and here uh, white right here bishop on c5 although we are continuing the game with uh, with the opposite colored bishop game but the activity of white pieces is too much to handle here for black we have an open g file here and that's why queen takes on c5 had to be played and now bishop on e6 all of these examples that i use in this video will also be in the description below so you can maybe analyze the whole games how uh, the position went into this into this tactical possibilities here after bishop on e6 you can of, of course play something like rook on f8 because you simply lose the, the g7 pawn that's why rook on e7 had to be played and now a very nice tactical shot queen on h6 uh, sacrificing the queen if you try g takes h6 then you get checkmated here on g8 uh, you can try rook on g8 but now again rook takes on g8 and it's again checkmated if you try to uh, get back here uh, to the eighth rank then again here the g7 is too much to handle and if you try something like g6 then again rook takes on g6 and you cannot protect anymore some rook on g7 ideas or rook on g8 both of these moves are simply winning here for 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 white so see how important it was to simply remove the key defender the knight on c5 and the queen is also uh, was a little bit overloaded to the defense of this e6 square and also this uh, knight on c5 so that's why bishop takes on c5 is completely winning here so let's see now another example here we have a position played with the white pieces by uh, isaac boleslavsky 
and again i'm pointing you out that uh, black has this weak holes or weak squares in front of the king so something has to happen here as i said we should have always this uh, tactical awareness you have to recognize these positions and uh, try to really attack these weaknesses in your opponent's camp so uh, in the game, uh, Boleslavski played a simple idea. First of all, he played the move e5. Attacking now again the weak squares. It's not about that uh, we are attacking this knight. We are getting a tempo by uh, attacking the knight. But the most important thing is that we have created now a very, very weak hole in your opponent's position. And it's the weak square d6. So after knight on h5, you see again we are evaluating the position which piece is the key defender in our opponent's position so that's why here Boleslavski played the move bishop on e3 removing the bishop which is the defender of this d6 square after bishop uh, farming rook on uh, c8 here bishop on e2 was played attacking the, the knight on h5 so it's a sort of a simple threat after g6 we have knight on e4 again attacking this uh, main protector this key defender this bishop on c5 after bishop on e3 we have f takes e3 now we have accomplished it we have also opened the f file here after rook on uh, c2 we have first knight on d6 uh, now we have finally occupied this very important square if you try to take bishop uh, the bishop on e2 then of course we have first rook on f7 and now we can try and uh, we'll lose the rook in the next move we can also uh, here create a very very annoying attack also through the c file this uh, coordination of this knights is perfectly dominating all over the board so that's why uh, here uh, after knight on d6 rook on f8 was played protecting first this f7 and now bishop takes on a6 uh, we're getting rid of our bad bishop after b takes on a6 now g4 attacking the knight here uh, knight on g7 has to retreat but now knight on uh, f6 and again we are attacking as i said this holes this weak squares in our opponent's position in front of your opponent's king now we have even another knight dancing a little bit around his uh, here this uh, black king and that's why bishop on c6 had to be played but now after rook from f to c1 in this position uh black resigned because uh, if you trade off then you have to do something with the bishop and uh, you have a forced checkmate sequence here even with the move rook on c7 so see this was the key uh, key move uh, let's go back pardon me here e5 attacking as i said uh, first this d6 square then removing the key defender which is the bishop again attacking the bishop uh, forcing really uh, black to uh, trade off this very very annoying defensive piece and here after trades of bishops now we have the weak holes here the weak squares and as i said here boleslavski simply occupied them and won the game very easily so let's see now another example it's a game played by bobby fisher um, and i've uh, published this game in my base uh, best chess games of all time series it was my uh, last video in the series here you see again we have this weak holes weak squares in front of your opponent's king so now we should really occupy the squares but the problem is that uh, we would love to play some somehow our knight here on f6 and it would be game over but that cannot happen uh, here bobby fisher uh, found a very very nice nice tactical idea he play, played first the move the bishop on e4 if you take then you see after knight on e uh, uh, knight on e4 the serious threat is here to play knight on f6 you cannot uh, prevent this idea by playing with the move knight on d7 because you're gonna get checkmated on h7 so that's why you would be forced i don't know to maybe uh, go uh, somehow with the queen on d7 or on c7 but again knight on f6 is very very dangerous so that's why after bishop on e4 uh, here uh, uh, Bobby Fisher's opponent didn't go for this bishop uh, that's why uh, first the defensive move uh, queen on e7 now knight on h7 you see how we're attacking now uh, simply uh, uh, removing really the pawns in front of your opponent's king knight takes on h7 and now h takes g6 we have f takes g6 bishop on g6 here uh, the problem is if you try uh, uh, queen on g7 we can first take then we can take the pawn here on e6 and then have eventually the knight placing our knight on f5 and again it would be game over after bishop on g6 here uh black tried knight on g5 we have knight on h5 attacking now finally this weak square this weak holes as i said the weak hole is the uh, pawn uh, the, the square f6 here here knight on uh, f3 was played but another problem you can try several checks 
here in the game black took the bishop on g6 but now knight on f6 and it was game over here after king on f7 we have queen on h7 and again it's a fourth checkmate you have only this square and here in the continuation you can try queen on g8 so let's see now another example here is the uh, position it was a game played by frank Röder uh, with the white pieces although uh, here uh, is the problem in black's position although we have a good defensive piece the bishop uh but again i'm pointing out these are really holes uh in your opponent's position and the and the more important thing is that we have a weak pawn on g6 so again in the game uh, rook on g3 you see attacking simply the weak pawn here bishop on e4 was played and now white found a very very nice tactical shot played simply and sacrifice the queen rook on g6 so sacrificing the queen after bishop on d3 it's not about taking the bishop we want to place our bishop here on d4 removing again the key defender uh, attacking really the key defender which is the bishop on g7 here after knight takes on e6 we have bishop takes on e6 and now we have even some discovered attack possibilities with the knight rook takes on f7 but now rook takes on g7 you cannot take of course because of this very annoying pin by the bishop king on f8 was played now knight on um, d7 using another knight in the attack you have to take with the queen now rook takes on uh, f7 if you try uh, something like uh, king on g8 then we have this one at uh, this discover check and then you have to lose the queen and we're continuing the game with the rook up so that's why after rook on f7 uh, rook king on e8 was played and now bishop takes on uh, d7 king takes on uh, king takes the rook on f7 but now <coughs> c takes d3 and again we're continuing the game with uh, with the piece up we have a perfect bishop pair and again it's completely uh, winning for white so as i said uh, these are the main principles when your opponent has this uh, uh, holes in front of uh, in front of his king attack the weak squares attack the weak pawns get use of your piece activity uh, tactical awareness as i said it's very important and one of the most important principles is to remove the key defender you see how important it was to maybe re remove the knight remove the bishop remove the rook remove the queen it uh, these pieces can all be the key defenders and while uh, when you do that then again attack this weak square or weak pawns okay uh, i hope you realize these ideas uh, we'll continue to follow our uh, basics in chess series with um, with some more opening principles middle game strategies and the end, end game strategies here's the link to my series how to spot chess tactics in which i show you how you should really um, get a better understanding about tactics uh, how you should uh, improve your tactical awareness you can check it out and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles videos in which i show you all of the possible tactical motifs that can happen in a chess game and you can also subscribe to my channel if you like this content thanks you for watching guys and chess is the best of course